Okay, so as we we're speaking right now, I don't see anyone talking about this incredibly dangerous situation unfolding right now inside of Europe, which will be Donald Trump's number one foreign policy challenge this year alone, obviously since it will pin him against Vladimir Putin and Russia on the national stage. This is an issue that we're going to talk about in this video because as we are talking, we are seeing the end of a two-year ceasefire agreement between pro-Ukrainian government forces and anti-government forces breaking right now in eastern Ukraine. Over 30 civilians died in fighting just last month alone. We are seeing casualties mount and the situation escalate to dangerous proportions where even the head of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe is warning people that this will be a major turning point inside of that country. Now, of course, we have many people speculating and fear-mongering. We even have a Princeton historian warning that that the possibility of World War III is now a very serious threat. We have many Americans worried about this threat, and if this will ever happen, it will happen inside of Ukraine with the current situation developing right now. Now, of course, the New York Times puts out an article saying that we are waiting for a clear Trump policy on Ukraine. But just from seeing his latest moves, we are getting a very clear picture at what's going to be happening next. As Donald Trump today said that he is, quote, very angry and will be expanding America's nuclear arsenal. Now this is a huge development, especially with Donald Trump mentioning how Russia deployed a new cruise missile that violated a 1987 arms control deal treaty with this announcement, saying that this is quote a big deal to him because we have seen Donald Trump previously say that he wanted to reduce Russia's nuclear arsenal as well as the United States nuclear arsenal, but but with his decision today, we are getting a clear sign that relations between Russia and the United States are at an all-time low with Trump as president. And for many people, that makes a lot of sense, especially since Trump's national security advisor, General Michael Flynn, was fired after we saw deep state mainstream media and Trump administration figures kick him out. This was a person who wanted to normalize relations with Russia and cooperate with them in order to defeat radical Islamic terrorists inside of the Middle East. And since his departure, Donald Trump decided to replace him with General McMaster, who even Ron Paul states says is a major war hawk. And according to him and his expertise, we could now say goodbye to, quote, getting along with Russia with Trump's announcement and pick for his latest national security advisor. Now, of course, everything's continuing like it did before with the escalation of tensions with Russia as NATO is continuing Obama-era arms buildup under Donald Trump. Germany is increasing its arms strengths to NATO. And the crazy neoconservative lunatic John McCain, who pulls the strings behind the scenes of the military industrial complex is going as far as to urging Ukrainian soldiers to break the Minsk ceasefire agreement openly calling for war. This is the same John McCain who three years ago showed up during the revolution, during the overthrow, dur during what people are calling a soft coup in Ukraine, and lent his support to the pro-European forces in that major transition of power. He has also done the same just a few weeks ago when he showed up in Ukraine. And what people are missing here is that this man is senile. And I'm not just saying that to insult him. I literally mean that. He was just prank called from a Russian comedian pretending to be the prime minister of Ukraine. And he was demanding that John McCain help Ukraine get lethal weapons in order to fight the Russians. And John McCain thought this was an actual real phone call and said that he would do everything he could to give them that assistance and that he would push Donald Trump to support that country. Now, has John McCain been effective in this? Well, Ukraine is saying that they are building bridges with Donald Trump. Trump has told Ukrainian politicians that he would not be lifting Russian sanctions.
Ukraine is calling for more Russian sanctions with the help of the United States, and we have seen more hawkish words against Russia from Donald Trump's own UN secretary, his own vice president, and himself alone, where he is now demanding that Russia give back Crimea to Ukraine. So unlike all these other fake news alternative media organizations that pretend to be independent, we want to give you the real news because it looks right now like Donald Trump has just broken his major promise on normalizing relations with Russia in order to defeat radical Islamic terrorists together. Convince me if I'm wrong in the comments section below, but looking at all these signs and everything unfolding right now, to me, the future conflict with Russia is very clear and a continuation by Donald Trump of what Barack Obama started. Convince me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, and if this video resonated with you, share it with your friends and family members, especially with the very fact that no one's talking about this. And they very much should be, because expect this issue to blow up, not only just figuratively, but possibly even literally, on the national stage, since this will be the front lines of the confrontation between Russia and the United States. Thank you again so much for watching. Subscribe, stay tuned, and I want to thank everyone for supporting us on we are change.org forward slash donate, allowing us not only to continue this operation, but expand it by hiring journalists all over the world.